Recently, I opened two English classic collections, and on top of that, got a massive mail day full of Japanese classic collection cards. I've got tons of 25th anniversary cards and four PSA submissions of these cards going out. We're going to review those right now. So first, like I mentioned in the intro, I opened two of the English classic collections here in the last couple days, and I'm going to be sending a bunch of these cards out to PSA for grading. I actually got cards in really relatively decent condition, better than I was expecting given that some other people who've opened it a little earlier than me complain about card condition and damage and things on the cards. I actually got kind of lucky. I feel like a lot of these are actually really clean. The biggest example of an issue was on this Charmeleon. And this is the only card out of the entire uh, box that had this issue. And man, it's probably gonna be even tough to see on camera, but there is Almost a crease looking thing, but it's definitely a dent that goes the entire length of the card. Kind of like something was sitting on it for a long time. Yeah, I can't even show you it on camera. It's so faint. But when you actually do look at it, it's pretty obvious. So I'm not going to be sending this one to PSA just because it is a significant dent or crease that goes the entire... Man, I wish I could show you. Why can't I show you? The rest of the cards though, condition wise have all been pretty decent. I think all the rest of the cards, the only real you know, issue that I ran into was slightly off center, which really isn't that bad. I feel like most of the cards are still within 60, 40 range. These Charizards look really nice. Uh, Santa, we're live. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. New post just dropped on Mrs. Claus OnlyFans. If you're looking for a great gift to give for Christmas, don't ask me. I'm obviously busy, but I know where you can go, eBay. Whether you want to buy an awesome graded Pokemon card or that mason jar that Timmy wants to put his anime figure in for some reason, shop on eBay using my affiliate link down in the description below. This will help support me and the YouTube channel with your Christmas gift purchases. Back to the video and Mrs. Claus, don't interrupt me again. The only other little things that I saw were maybe a factory white dot here and there on a corner that could maybe take a card down from a 10 to a nine. But otherwise, I mean, no dents, no creases, no major damage across any of the other cards in the English Classic Collection. I actually really like the English Classic Collection cards. I know a lot of people prefer the Japanese, and I do too. I would say that I prefer the Japanese as well. The the shiny border, the hollow border, same with celebrations and the 25th anniversary. I feel like the Japanese version of that is... I, I like how, how much more unique it is. But when it comes to, like, starters and other Pokemon in the set, like, obviously they weren't hollow when they first released either, so they are unique no matter what. I can appreciate the original yellow border, and I can appreciate the new sort of uh, shiny border that they did in Japanese. I like them both. I prefer the Japanese one, but let me know in the comments below, do you like the Japanese one better or the English one better? So we got all the Charmanders and the Charmeleons, except for that one that had the damage. We got both of the base head Pikachus were super clean and super centered, so I was really happy about that. We got the interesting, this is actually Sun and Moon promo, so when I was originally opening the Japanese box, I said I felt like this card was unique because I'd never seen it before. Someone in the comments let me know. It is a Black Star promo from Sun and Moon. I didn't know that, but a very cool Zapdos card Nonetheless, we got a Raichu. There's only one in this submission because I'm sending the other one out to a friend. He's a big Raichu collector. Figured I would send him some cool stuff for Christmas. We've got the Clefairy reprints. We've got the Clefable reprints. And then we're getting into the Blastoise deck. So we got Blastoise, obviously, all the Squirtles, the War Tortles, the Articunos. Really like those. We've got the Lapras. I really like this artwork of Lapras, kind of like back in an ice cave, like hidden back in a cave. I like that. Even though in the game, I think, aren't you just given Lapras at some point at like level 30? And then we have Gyarados. Love this. Harkold Soul Silver Gyarados. You've seen me buy it many times in Japanese. It's an Arita artwork. It just looks really good. We've got a bunch of those. And then we've got Magikarp, of course, that evolves into Gyarados. This one was unique to me. I did not think that they would choose the Evolutions version of this card to make Hollow and not the base set version of this card. Because I feel like in Japanese, it looks like just another base set card. It doesn't, because CP6 was so much closer to original Japanese than Evolutions was to like original base set, the way that the cards looked. So it made it seem like this was the base set Mewtwo, but it's not. It's actually the Evolutions Mewtwo, which is really interesting to me. I believe this is the first time this card here was ever released in English. So this Mr. Mime artwork is from the vending series in Japanese, and I think this is the first time it's ever printed in English, and obviously it is uh, holographic, which is on top of everything else, super awesome. Then we have the uh, double chin Venusaur, and we got Bulbasaur, of course. 
We've got all the Ivy Swords. And like I said, the rest of the cards looked really clean apart from that one Charmeleon. For some reason, that one Charmeleon came out with that weird dent. But you've got this nice uh, reprint of Scyther. Now we have Chansey. And lastly, we have Snorlax sitting under the tree picking some picking some apples or berries or something. Looking all cute. Next up, we have some more Japanese Classic Collection cards. I already sent out the cards for my first Classic Collection opening to CGC, so we're going to see how they grade there, but I'm going to be sending the rest of these out to PSA. These are cards that I just purchased off of Mercari. Occasionally, I'll pick up a lot here and there of the non-starter Pokemon, but still including Zapdos, Articuno, Snorlax, Lapras, those other popular Pokemon, and I'm getting them less than $2 a piece, like $1.50 a piece in lots of like 30 for 30 bucks kind of thing. On top of that, I also picked up some of the lots of the starters. The starters themselves, not going for very much. Uh, a lot of people obviously want like Blastoise, Venusaur, and Charizard. So you can pick up lots of the actual starters. I think I got these for around $4 a piece. I definitely can appreciate, you know, these reprints in hollow form for four bucks. And I think somebody else will too. So we're going to send four of these Charmanders. And then we've got a bunch of the Charmeleons. We've got three of those looks like. We've got a bunch of Squirtles and War Tortles, and we have a Bulbasaur. It's kind of indicative of what I did with the Master Ball reverses, where everyone was focusing on the Evolutions and Mewtwo and some of those other high-profile Pokemon, but then I was picking up, like, Gyarados, Arcanine, like, kind of that second tier, Snorlax, that second tier of Pokemon in terms of popularity, but it still really worked out, and those cards were, like, five, ten bucks where the evolutions were always kind of in like the 30 to 50 range for their master ball reverses. So kind of taking the same strategy and applying it here and ho hopefully it works out. We'll see how we do. We've got a Lapras. We've got an Articuno. We've got Raichu, a Zapdos. We've got a couple of Scyther. We've got Mr. Mime. We've got a few different Snorlax. Basically, I tried to make sure that every lot that I bought had at least a Snorlax in it. We've got Clefables and Clefairies. And I feel like base set collectors, even though they're not base set cards, they might still get some nostalgia. And with that unique holofoil pattern, they may want to pick up base set reprints. So I decided to grab some of those as well. All right, the nostalgia trip does not end there because we have another reprint of Charizard, but this one, the 25th anniversary celebrations version. I've already sent out nine of these to PSA, and I guess in my last mail day, I had six more. And there's a bunch more still coming. I really like this card at the price it is right now. I mentioned it in my other video, but you guys can go watch that for my actual like detailed breakdown of why I'm picking these up. But yeah, 25th anniversary Charizard. Love the stamp. Love the confetti hollow. It's definitely the best version. Uh, it's way better than the Celebration Charizard in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it's just great. So we got six more of these to send out to PSA. So why am I sending these out separately? I'm sending these out separately mainly because the Japanese classic collection cards are pretty minty uh not a whole lot of issues and they're japanese so you know slightly different card stock different look to the backs stuff like that than english and there's a part of me that's like the english cards they look really clean but they do have like a white dot here and there minor imperfections that to a greater probably would get a lot of them tens but maybe a greater after seeing a lot of mint Japanese cards and then going into English where there's white dots all over the place and stuff, maybe, I don't know, might be influenced not to give those cards tens. I know they should probably go into every card objectively, but we know how inconsistent they are with how they grade things. So for me, it was just like, let's separate them all out. Let's send the Japanese in one lot. Let's send the English in one lot. And then we're also sending these in one lot, but this mainly because... These cards in 10, I think, go for like 300 ish dollars. So that is above the 199 range. And I want to get these back a little bit faster. So I will be sending these the value tier, which I think is $25 a piece. I sent my other nine at the value tier as well. So that's why we're sending some of these separately. And then last but not least, we're going to be sending these off separately too. PSA right now, I think, decrease the amount of minimum cards you have to have for a submission. For bulk, I think they decrease the amount of card minimum cards to 10. So if you have 10 cards you want to send for 15 bucks right now, you can absolutely do that, which is pretty awesome. But we have some more 25th anniversary cards. We've got a Pikachu. These are all minty. Definitely all have a chance at 10. We've got some Blastoise. We've got some Venusaur. And we have a bunch of Umbreon. So I bought eight of these Umbreon to send off. Umbreon, extremely popular Pokemon. Lots of Umbreon collectors out there right now. It's a shiny form of Umbreon, which is really cool. It's the black instead of the gold. The other versions of this card are extremely expensive. So if someone really likes this card, 
but most people can't afford the original card that this artwork came from, they're gonna default to this one. So that's kind of my thinking with this card going forward. Could be right, could be wrong. I'm trying to uh, be a little bit more strategic when I'm spending, you know, between 50 and $100 per card nowadays. I did want to kind of upgrade myself into that range and kind of see how it went for a little while. So we picked up eight of those Umbreons. This card I actually pulled myself from a V-Star Universe box. I was testing out a TikTok seller and they had V-Star Universe for a pretty good price. I think I got it for like $72 or something for one box, which I thought that's fun to open. I never got to open V-Star Universe. Let's, let's crack a box. And so I actually pulled the uh, Charizard V out of it, which is great. Then we have just some random stuff that came in the mail day, as well as a couple of cards that were just kind of sitting around that I totally forgot about. So we have Blastoise from Galactic Conquest. This Blastoise is really cool, really, really minty. So I think it does have a shot at a 10, which would be awesome. Then we have Gyarados. Obviously, we just saw the reprint of this Gyarados, but this Gyarados is from the original HeartGold SoulSilver. It's got half a swirl on this side and a swirl on this side. Super awesome looking. Hopefully, this one gives the 10. Extremely minty as well. And then we got a Tag Team GX Gengar Mimikyu and a Umbreon GX. Just really popular Pokemon. That's kind of what I focus on. Popular Pokemon, unique artworks. This artwork is super awesome. Obviously, we have Mimikyu coming out as the promo for Paldean Fates. If you guys are going to be around around December 1st or whatever that weekend after December 1st is when I get my boxes, I will be opening 20 boxes of the new shiny Paldean Fates set in Japanese. That's going to be super awesome. Hopefully, there's God Packs and awesome, you know, special illustration rares and stuff that we'll be opening during that live stream. So make sure to uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and you will be notified when I go live opening 20 boxes of that uh, shiny Paldean Fate set in Japanese. Should be awesome.